Hey, everybody, welcome back. I'm Susan Lynn, and this is Alan Johnson, and we're here to answer your political questions. Let's go deep, let's dive deep and see what our spirit guides and our intuition uh, say about your questions. Thanks for joining us, and thank you, Alan, for joining me today. Thank you, Susan. Are you staying warm? I I had a much much heavier sweater on, but I look like the Michelin man. Like I couldn't put my arms down, and I was like, "Okay, that's not gonna work. I'm gonna go for the thin one, and then I'll just shiver every once in a while." I like your little um, your Patagonia vest. Why well, know Thank you, you you, you I got your head comment on my. I know you keep my, shaking um, your head. My I home. think you should just grow like a beard, you know, oh, and like. Let's just make it happen. See, up up here in the in the upper Midwest and in January when it's below zero, there's nothing to do. So it was either shave my head or pull out the the twenty five hundred piece jigsaw puzzle with kittens. <laughs> with and kittens. I decided I just, just, just this will grow back. I won't get I won't get my time back from a jigsaw puzzle. So <laughs> If you Those had you, all that time, you could have done like a like a cool yeah, symbol in your. I could have done. <laughs> I'm I'm lucky it turned out this well. Believe me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you do it yourself? Yes, I did. Oh. No alcohol was involved. I just no decided. alcohol, no skin was uh, sacrificed. We'll grow back. Yeah, Eva girl says grow some dreads. All right, I'm, here I'm, we go. The question. Okay, let's let's in. dig in. All right. What did, what did you, oh, right. Okay. Karen Edinger says, when is Jack going to get Judge Cannon replaced? Well, I will just say before Alan jumps in that I, I'm not sure it's Jack that's going to get her replaced. I really feel like it's going to be one of the ethic. Do they have like ethic courts or their, uh, the bar, um, a board? I really feel like, and I've read on this before. I want, I'm really interested to hear what, what Alan's going to say, but I've read that she has a golden parachute, that she will leave the court, even though this is a nice, plump, long, maybe forever appointment. Uh, she's got an, a golden parachute, and I think that she will go to work in uh, a think tank, a private industry. She will be well paid for her services, allegedly. What do you get, Alan? Yeah, I get this. This was her 15 minutes of fame. She will she will disappear someday. Um, you know, well, she might be under the whatever happened to Judge Cannon um, <laughs> column. Um, but I also think that she will. Her, you you talked many uh, a year or more ago about the the many arrows hitting. Oh, yeah. You know who? And I think you're a viewer. Wow! That was, right. That's when I had a full head of hair. I was watching you then. I scared the hair um, off of your head. You did, uh, and. It, it's going to be okay. She she's going to fade into the history books. Oblivion. Like so many of these people. Oblivion. So many. Yeah. Okay. I and I don't. We we don't know when. I I would just say, I mean, are you getting like twenty four or more like twenty five for her to be? What what I feel is that the da the dam uh, the damage that she can do is limited to this. Um, and I, I have to admire, I mean, how the Republicans have thought for years to set this up. It is it is a pretty an awesome um, onslaught to our democracy, what they've set up and all the interconnected parts of it. But I think that um, I, I think her impact is going to be minor, frankly. And the timing almost doesn't matter because she's it, it the steamroller of effect with, you know, Pluto and everything else is just going to roll over these people. And she'll be at a think tank, as you said. <laughs> and and when he says it won't have any effect, I mean, I kind of feel like one thing that Jack Smith did was he he knew he's like, just forget this case, right? Judge Cannon, this is not something I'm going to hang my hat on. Uh, this is probably not going to be something that I'm going to win, but it will keep. That bit, he's kind of like giving a toy to a toddler, keep him busy. And then he has his cases that are more likely to be one of those arrows that strike. And Freda says, unfortunately, Thomas is in charge of the district judges. And I agree, but we can read about Thomas too, uh, because for some reason I just got chills and it is cold, but it, this is a different kind of chill. Um, are you picking up anything new on Thomas, Alan? Alan? 
I think that all of these people are wobbling in various various forms of, you know, weebles wobble, but they don't fall down quite yet. And I think that there's going to be um, this energy. What we're, what we're picking up on now is the energy right now. And I think there's, there's a, a great deal of anxiety afoot. Um, I think people are spooked. Donors are spooked. Um, the plan, the plan, capital T, capital P, didn't come off the way everyone thought it would. They thought it would. And I think that some of these um, these energies coming in, astrologically and otherwise, are really going to topple people. So I think it's going to be an, an interesting mixed bag of how you know when a when a cliff starts, the sand starts sliding down the cliff, and it gets gains momentum, and it takes more and more soil or sand with it. I think there's going to be a moment where much of that happens, and things just collapse. People go through trap doors. Yeah, and I don't mean on, on a. <laughs> On a hanging platform. I mean that that oh, things God. just start happening and no. they, and it and it devolves. Yeah, it's it's a lot like Tucker to me. The Tucker mm -hmm. Carlson thing it was our preview. You know, like if you were watching a preview trailer, the movie is coming. That was the preview. One minute the man is there, he's he's unstoppable. No one can you know take him out. He's got all this money, all these fans, and the next minute he was gone. So that trap door analogy really makes sense. Um, and I know Karen is saying, but the I, this is why I said what, what I said. I know the classified docs are a big thing. Listen, this is, remember, and Alan brought it up. The guide said there's 100 arrows. There's 100 archers with 100 arrows. Five hit their mark. Three take them out. They said this over a year ago. And they said it to prepare us that there will be some justice that just doesn't happen for us. Be prepared. If I, if three arrows take him out, I'm going to be thrilled. Now, what needs to happen is we can't just walk away like, and, and just leave this undone. We, this is where we're going to come back. We'll have the house of Senate and we'll come back and we really will pass amendments and we really will tighten up this stuff so that this can't happen again. So what I'm saying is, Okay, if he gets away with this, I'm not just saying we're going to leave the barn door open and let everybody come in and, you know, do whatever they want to do. We will attend to this. I, I really think so. Do you think so as well, Alan? I, I do. All of this has ramifications, and I and it didn't mean to suggest it didn't matter. It, it does very much matter. But the overall overreaching goal, the ov ov overarching point is that that he will go away. And, and and then as a result of the swamp being cleaned, uh, which is ironic, um, there'll be an opportunity for better governance, for better uh, guardrails. And so it's good that all this is coming up. Um, God knows that there can be some improvements made, but um, we should focus. There are times where we need to focus on the forest, not the trees. This is one of those times. And I would just say in Alan's, I want to say defense, but I mean, no one's attacking you. But I do the same thing when we're channeling. Our spirit guides have no emotions. So they just say things that just literally piss y'all off <laughs> because they're like, it doesn't matter. And I'm, I almost always catch myself and I have to back up and explain. But when we're channeling, the spirit guides are like, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. Like to them, it's like, that's not going to be the thing that brings them down and it's going to be dealt with later. So they just can't get upset about it. Um, good to see you, Kevin. And good to see all of you guys. Thank you for joining us tonight. Put your questions in the chat. We're talking politics and we're going deep, deep into the muck. Um, you know, this is yeah. really interesting too. Oh, go ahead, Alan. No, no, that, that was the one I was going to. Really? Yeah. Uh, so the tape, the Roger Stone tape, I, I think that you're talking about, and please correct me, Alan, if you think that she's talking about something else. Uh, I, apparently, Roger Stone told, I think it was an informant. I think he didn't realize he was talking to somebody who was not on his team, but he, he suggested that they needed to unalive certain politicians, certain Democratic politicians. Uh, so I think that's what you're talking about. Do you think anything's going to come of that tape, Alan? You know, um, Roger Stone has come up a lot in my mind over these last few weeks. Oh, really? um, and I think I think he could be one of the 
oh shit moments when we open up, well, open up a paper. We don't read papers anymore, but we open up our um, our newspaper on our device. It's it's and it's ironic for entertainment purposes only. He could be in someone's crosshairs. I, there there are things that are going to unfold that I think really are going to shock us, shock. And we think we've seen everything, but I think there could be things that shock us. I'd also written down before we started that there's a double cross that will be dealt with. So when you you know when you sleep with dogs, you get fleas. Not your, not Zoe, not your dog. No, no of course not. But um, it feels like there's been many, many um, deals made and broken and made and broken. And it feels like even they're losing the plot a little bit. On um, What am I supposed oh, wow. to do? So it feels like there could be, um, I hesitate, there, there could be ramifications for a, uh, for double dealing. Does that have any... Yeah, for double dealing. Um, a double crossing. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, he's already been pardoned. I mean, he's already escaped, uh, you know, jail once, uh, maybe even twice. But I don't see him escaping a third time. But the question is, when I put him, when I move him down his timeline, right, and I, I just kind of see where, where he's going and what the energy might have in store for him, I'm not sure that I can even get him to jail. So he might fall off a yacht. He might, um, you know, he might fall down some stairs, uh, something like that. Is that, do you also feel that might be possible? Yeah. Oh, in, in, in the, and again, I want to be careful how I language this, but in the, in the headline, I, and I don't always read all the details because sometimes I get overwhelmed by all the details. Um, but I did see uh, in a headline, uh, Roger Stone and assassination used together. And I immediately went to it because it, it had energy. So oh, I know wow. that he was, he, was, mm, he was talking about others who should be assassinated. And I just, I thought that would be an interesting and ironic karmic um, situation there. So I don't wish that on anyone. Yep. But um, that'll be, there, this is going to be a very, very interesting spring, Susan. You've you've been many, many people have been picking up on how unusual and we're going to really see the belly of the beast. Yeah, we're going to see how how venal and um, icky and that's a technical word, how icky so much of this is. I like venal and icky in the same sentence. That was um, a law firm. That <laughs> Vino and Icky. That's yeah. awesome. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> for entertainment purposes only. For entertainment purposes only. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Trump looks bad as Ivana haunting him. Mm -hmm. um, she, you know, he's oblivious, but, but yeah, I, I have seen her. Uh, I don't know if you'd call it haunting, but I've seen her like whack, you know, like whack him on the top of his head. Um, but he's oblivious. Uh, if he if he was even remotely clued into his own spirit guides, he wouldn't have gotten quite as deep. I do think that Trump is is doing what he's supposed to be doing. Um, but I think that the problem is is that he relishes it too much. He's taking it too far. It's it's like he's just run away with the energy. So, does that does that have anything to do with his hand injury? <laughs> We should address right. that before it comes up again. Right, right, right. So I don't know if you guys have seen it. Um, I, I hesitate to do this because it's not very high tech, but I can show you his hand on my phone. Um, he's got this, um, or maybe I can. He's got this. It's it's horrendous looking, but I don't. I don't think this is his. I don't think that this is his hand. Pretty horrendous. You know, I don't, it doesn't, it just doesn't look like his hand. And I'll tell you another thing. Um, I mean, look at that. Is that in focus, Alan? Yeah, enough. I don't need to, yeah, it's in focus but enough. The thing is, is that Trump monitors his appearance, right? Come on, you know, uh, his hair moves as a piece. You know what I mean? Like it, and it barely moves. And 
he would never let a photo get out like that. Um, he would never, if he had an injured hand, he wouldn't stick it out like that. Um, uh, unless that was a narrative that was going to help him. So like, if he said, I, you know, messed up my hand using a shovel with a groundbreaking, you know, like I'm a tough guy. I was just in Iowa at the caucuses and I was out with the farmers. I mean, you better believe he would make that into some sort of story that would benefit him. And you know, Photoshop. I mean, you were, you and were I know Photoshop his, it, it, what doesn't look right is, is his wrist. That's the part that doesn't look right to me. That does not look like his wrist. It just doesn't, it just doesn't look like his wrist. This looks younger. Look at the wrist, y'all. Yeah. Look at that. So how much bandwidth is this guy going to continue to take up with all of us? We're, we're looking at a photo of his wrist. Well, that's true. Kevin but, says I mean, so, it's catch up. Kevin says it's catch up. <laughs> yeah. Ah, that's funny, Kevin. Well, that's true. I mean, he, he really is. Um, he really is taking up all of our bandwidth. It's insane. Right. Um, yeah. Maybe he fell. I'm not, I know he could have fallen, but he would have stuck his hand in his pocket. He's too convinced. He's too quaffed. You know, he understands the value of the image. And he makes fun of people who don't wear suits. He made fun of the Jan Sixers. Do you guys remember that? Mm -hmm. That he said they were poorly dressed and he wished they were dressed better? What did he expect? Suits, ties, you know, wingtip shoes? Yeah, I don't know what he expected. Maybe it is a golfing in injury. I don't know, you guys. Um, but it does look like blisters. It does. Um, Maybe and, I'm wrong. He, and again, I just want he lives in our head. It just yeah, it, he I, lives in our know, head. He, maybe is it maybe it's Photoshop, maybe it's not. Um it's but I think that he lives in our head. That's that's the point I get from that. And, yeah, that's a that, that's a really good point. That will end. That will end. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Any other questions? Um, I'm gonna bring up a question about Stefanik, Elise, Elise Stefanik. Uh that's the woman I was trying to describe in my political video as potentially being the Speaker of the House. And now um, Trump is saying that he may be considering her for his running mate. Uh, and he called her a killer, which kind of also, you know, fits with the description of the woman I was describing in that video that she was pretty you know, vicious. And that, you know, so that was kind of interesting that I described this energy and then he describes her as a killer. Um, I'm not saying she's a killer. I'm just saying that she has that energy of going for the kill of being very, almost kind of vicious really is what I get. Do you get anything on that at all? Do you think that he'll, he'll pick her for his running mate? Do you see him getting a woman as a running mate? Do you see him ever even getting a running mate? That's a lot of questions, Susan. I know, I know. I couldn't stop um, I I think he may discard her. I think he I think there's a history of what I get is that um it's just so not over. Any energy we're getting now, I think they're jockeying. Um, I think that she, he may pick her and discard her. And as he becomes more and more desperate and more and more uh deranged, um, and this and the and the circumstances swirl around him and everyone else. He may um, throw her over for someone else, which would be very typical of how he treats people. And you know, there's there's so many bootlickers that surround him. Um, but I yeah. think that some of these people are just going to be brought low by these uh, disclosures that are coming up, and they they they're they're, they're not going to be able to they're not going to be seaworthy. So that's the other thing. They are investigating Stefanik. In the house, I think it was just announced uh, today or yesterday. They're uh, they're investigating her connections to Jan Six, so that's an interesting thing too. Either a the Democrats feel like they need to get a handle on her because she is ascending in power and they want to kind of knock her down uh, while they have while they have a chance. Um, so that's interesting. And I just saw a really good question um, that I really wanted to answer but I can't do two things at once. That's unfortunate. Um, uh, 
Oh, no, that's right. It, the question was in my head from my spirit guides. They're like, it was us. It was hello, over here, over here. I'm looking in the chat, you know. Okay, so you know what I just got was Walt Walt Nata. Mm -hmm. He that's the perfect guy for Trump to announce as his running mate. Because he's a he, sycophant. I mean, that's what you know. He's, his, dri he's his driver. Yeah, he, he's that's exactly what he wants, is basically. Mike Pence Jr., right? Somebody who is so milk toast, you know, they're his Walt Nauta's his um, allegiance is a hundred thousand percent. I mean, he has Trump has no doubt. Stephanie is because she is vicious, that makes her a potential combatant, a, a potential um ab adversary. Walt Nauta, can you believe if he would announce? I mean, I can, I would put nothing past him, nothing. I also think he just, I think his misogyny will come out in terms of. That's also true. That's he also won't be true. able to keep it. Yeah, he doesn't respect. That's true. President Walt. Yeah. No, first of all, I don't think Trump is going to win, much less Walt Nauta. Uh, But yeah. Anything you want to talk about there, Alan? Uh, you did you know, start some things. It, oh, Kevin. We, we have a lot of. Here. Hey, Kevin. Go ahead. We have, I'm sorry, dear. We have a lot of start. We have a lot of start things. Um, I it also had occurred to me the other day, or I should say, spirit put it in my head about um, Julian Assange. Right. Um, uh, gosh, what was who was the other Julian Assange? The um, the guy who lives in Russia, Russia now. Uh, Navalny. Navalny. No, no. Um, an American. Uh, and then the, who was the woman? Summer? Okay, Snowden. Snow, Edward Snowden. Alain? Julian, Ju uh, you you Julian mentioned Alain. Julian, Julian Assange. Assange, okay, right. And then who was the, the, the woman who was put in prison? I don't know. You didn't text me that. <laughs> uh, win, what, summer? Winter? Oh, uh, shoot. Yeah. The woman, the woman who exposed Trump's in, in reality a naive, winner, reality winner, reality winner. So what I got was that two of these people, two, two of the three will come back into the news cycle and be part of these revelations that extend into over the next few years that there's information that's going to be meted out. Wow. Um, and and again, as things change around um, uh, Russia and as things change around some of the power structure um, that currently exists, um, it feels like there, there are people who are going to be prove, proven, proved to be um, prescient or that you know, their, their information was correct going going back even before. Remember, in the, the, so the latter years of the Obama administration, he closed down the Russian embassy and there were there were things that he was trying to do to stop the infiltration so there some of this goes way back to that and we're going to finally get a, a full story most a mostly full story about what what happened that's very interesting so you feel like assange or being i mean i get reality winner i mean i think she did the right thing she was I mean, it's very interesting, right? Because the people that stormed the Capitol, they thought they were doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. They truly believed they were led to believed or coerced or whatever to believe. Reality winner also believed. She 100% believed I've got to do something, right? My freedom, I don't care. I don't care. It's about America. So that's, it's, it's fascinating, isn't it? To yeah, me, it's fascinating. I feel that um, she may not want to be the subject of that much attention anymore. So she may just, um, yeah, she I, may I, stay, stay under a rock or wherever she is. I don't blame her. Safe. Um, but the other two, for some reason, and I know, um, I think one is, I think Edward Snowden is in Russia, I believe. And Julian Assange, I think was going to be extradited. Um, but I've lost, I've lost the thread on that, but they came up as coming back into the news and it feels like wow. they've been, they've been, um, Perhaps they have more to tell or more to sell in terms of the disclosures. More to tell or more to sell. And and to me, that what, what I'm getting when you say that 
is it may even confuse the situation a little bit more because now we have an unreliable narrator. And you know what I mean? Someone we're not sure they telling the truth and they're not telling the truth. And that's going to be fascinating. And you were saying this when, when I was talking to you before we went on with, with Trump's hand, you said, you know, we're all going to have to really get really good at discernment, you know, and this is going to be more of that. Definitely. Absolutely. I don't know, Kevin, you'll have to ask him. They want to, Kevin wants to know when you're starting your own channel. So far he's, he's happy uh, riding shotgun. <laughs> this is fun. I, I enjoy doing this. Thank you for asking Kevin. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Uh, there was a really good, just good questions in here. Give me just a second. Oh God. So I am going to answer this because, um, what's going on with Chuck Grassley? Um, is he being treated? So, so the news says that he's being treated with a, uh, they, they said like intravenous antibiotic. I mean, meaning like that that's a very serious situation. Uh, if that is the case, if that is truly how he's being treated, do you feel like he's, what am I getting? Mm -hmm. What are you getting? I think that, um, he's, he's, uh, of a certain age and he's under a tremendous amount of stress. I think that there are some cognitive decline as well. And I think that um, there could be something as simple as like a, a UTI, um, but there's 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 a, a general diminution. Malaise, his, yeah, diminution, okay. Life, life energy and even, I, I'm not sure how much longer some of these folks are gonna be able, the, the, the pressure is extensive. And they can, he, you know, he's been around a long enough time to see the writing on the wall as well. Um, I, I'm not sure he was as gung ho on a lot of this um, as some of the younger people. I think he remembers what it was like when Congress actually governed. Yeah. And so I think there's a, there's a ruefulness and um, he's also doubled down because um, he has a lot riding on this, but it's coming out through his body. I think yeah. there was the that sense of um, uh, the uh, um, disharmony. Disharmony, okay. Mm -hmm. The disharmony within him. I call that energy. rot. <laughs> That's I just ages. call that rot. Um, I, I feel like sepsis. I just heard sepsis. So I and I hear June. So June might be a make or break kind of moment for him. Um, and, and he may have to step down in June or uh, something feels like. I think the family is already circling the wagons and, and staff. Him. And I think he's he's it feels like he's been a bit of a no show anyway, that they're mm -hmm. keeping him propped up. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. I got that that he may not be his own man, you know, that he. He and you intimated to that as anyway, uh, that that this isn't he doesn't get to decide, right? He doesn't get to decide, I'm gonna retire, I'm ready to retire. He didn't even want to come back. He he had really made it very clear that he was ready to retire and spend time with his grandkids. And then all of a sudden, either the Republican Party said, You've got to come back and do this, which very well could be the case, but somebody said you've got to do this. You don't have a choice. You've got to do this. Right. Um, and he did. And here he is. Right. Like you I really think he is ruining the day that he made that decision to go back. I think, I think he really, really felt that he deserved to retire, to have some time off to, you know, just be a regular old human being instead of this immense pressure that you have in the Senate. And I think the um, there may be an exit point for him because that's how he is able to get out of this with some honor. Which is sad, but yeah, yeah true. Well, he, uh, what we're going to be seeing are the um, the deals with the devil. So many that's people really true. Have made. So and we're chips, see... chips being called. Right. That's what I got. Chips right. being called. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You want to pick one? Go for, or if you've got one lined All up. All right. This is a good one. Okay. 
The question is, do we see Officer Harry Dunn, formerly of the Capitol Police and a hero of Jan 6, winning the Maryland congressional seat he is running for? Not necessarily. <laughs> Not necessarily. We would like to say yes. We both agree on this. I, I Maybe Kevin has a different opinion. I don't know. Uh, but um, I think he's a good guy. I think he should win. But I, it feels like what I was um, getting was like a moat of alligators. And, you know, a seasoned political person with a very seasoned uh, cast of, you know, crew could potentially make this. But I just feel like he's a little hapless in the sense that he does, he's a great police officer, but I don't think, I think the Republicans are going to lay traps for him. I just think it's going to be really hard. I mean, the seat he's running for, even if it is blue, it they are going to sandbag him and deep fake him, which is make videos that, that aren't even real. It's just going to be ugly. They're really going to go after him. So I'm not sure he could pull it off. Is that what you're getting, basically, Alan? I, I am decent man, um, but also the the association, you know, it's sort of like uh, military veterans running running for office. There's sort of a cachet there, and there's a cachet with this as well. But um, I think that it's going to be it's uh, politics going to be a real snake pit over the next few years until things get right sized and um, a whole new generation of younger people start getting involved and coming in Sa savvy savvy politicians yes and also just civically minded candidates so I, I, wish I, I hope i think we both hope he wins i mean we both want him to win i will definitely send him a donation i just can't at this point anyway i don't know that he can pull it off um agreed but we do need to support these people with donations because they're going to incur you know, fees and cost. <coughs> and um, and that's, you know, we need to support these people. We shouldn't just write them off and say, we're not going to support you. We, we have to be willing to uh, give them 20 bucks and just know that maybe that they won't win. Somebody that I think is going to win that I think we need to send 20 bucks to. And now I can't, they show me your face and they don't give me the woman from Tennessee. Sorry, Alan is recovering from a uh, cold, uh, the woman from <coughs> Tennessee that, uh, was, um, uh, with the Justins, the Tennessee three. Right. Right. I feel like she's going to win and it's a long shot, but I'm telling you, I think she's going to win. I cannot think of her name right now. You guys can put it in the chat. Uh, next question is Fannie Willis thing going to just blow over. The Republicans are so desperate. So true, Barbara. So true. They are desperate. And, you know, when something is desperate, it's, you know, it's dangerous, right? Um, I mostly feel like it's going to blow over, but it's going to be a problem. It's going to be more of a thorn in her side because, you know, they beat the drum. They don't care what's true or what. And I'm not saying it's true or not true. I'm saying it doesn't matter. They're going to beat the drum, beat the drum, beat the drum. And as we know, if you just keep repeating lies long enough, people start to believe them. So I think she's going to be okay, but I think it's really going to be, it's a hit job. The guides just said it's a hit job. Absolutely. On Absolutely. Um, and, and that's going to have, it's going to leave a mark. I mean, this stuff is designed to do that. It's designed to shake the confidence, right, of, of uh, the citizens. Huge. What do you get, Alan? And, it, it's, and a huge distraction to her. And um, it's some of, and there's a, there's some racial overtones to it as well, but it also um, tarnishes her image. Um, I think that it, I think that the wheels of justice will continue to grind and move mm -hmm. forward, but um, it will blow over. And again, remember what Susan said a while back about the hundred arrows. All, all and all of these, all of these cases are important. All these indictments are important. But um, it may be it may be a curious combination of things that ultimately takes him down. That's what I get. It's going to be something completely unforeseen. Could it be E. Jean Carroll? Because you know she's gaining steam, and the guides told me way back, like a two woman, years ago, be a woman who takes him down. Yeah, 
And I, and they told me E. Jean Carroll, E. Jean Carroll, E. Jean Carroll. So that, that's very interesting what you say, Alan, that it, uh, all this sound and fury signifying nothing here they go mm -hmm. getting me quoting freaking Shakespeare, right? Something, mm -hmm. um, all this sound and fury, like this is not something I would ever say, um, signifying nothing. It, it, but it, what it, what they're saying is, is that you've got these big guns, you've got Jack Smith, right? You got Fonnie Willis, uh, you know, Tish James, um, and E. Jean Carroll might be the one that really, really in a weird way, takes him out. It feels like she, and, and that's true, you don't usually quote Shakespeare, you usually quote <laughs> Beyonce. But, um, it, again, it feels like a curious mixture mixture of, of circumstances. And she could so, um, she's, got, she's gotten under his skin the most. I think so too. This, this, is, this really has him off rattled. balance and rattled. So I think I think it will continue to um, bedevil him. And it yeah. should. Yeah. Happy birthday, Michelle Obama. If you're oh. watching, hi, Michelle. We love you. Please oh. run for office. <laughs> She's too smart for that. But happy birthday. You want to put um, one here? Yeah, go ahead. God, I can't read Mitch McConnell to save my life. Was MTG caught doing insider trading? I, we, this question was posted before we went live and I immediately got yes. Now that's, I mean, like it was like, yeah, like it came out of my mouth without me even thinking about it. But, you know, the letter of the law, you know what I mean? Is what is the letter of the law? And, I think that's a really gray area, unfortunately, for Congress, right? A lot of Congress people kind of trade and things look a little, you know, askew. So I don't know. What do you get? Tell me you get something different. Um, <clears throat> again, I think she's done all sorts of things um, we don't know about. There's a real <laughs> there's a real sense of catch me if you can. Just um uh, flaunting convention, flaunting um, her position. So I, 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 it's definitely a possibility, but I also think that it's, it, it's not, it, it, in some ways, it, it, it's not that it doesn't matter, but there's so, there's so, when we're on the other side of this, we're going to look back and see how these people came up against themselves, you know, came up against their hubris, their um, unresolved childhood trauma. I don't, I don't know what just, uh, it's just such a package of uh, craziness and that they, they flew, to, they will have flown too close to the sun. And you've been saying that for six months that, uh, is that oh, Icarus? Let me go. Icarus? Is that Icar Icarus? Icarus, listen to you. Listen to you. <laughs> oh God, I got an upgrade. Look, Afafe is here. Touched by Tarot. Yay. Hey, Afafe. And, and I don't even know who, who Icarus is or what I'm quoting now. I just want to take a, a, just a very short break and say, if you guys, 1350 of you, have not gone to Touched by Tarot and done her pick a card readings, mm -hmm. what are you waiting for? Wait, don't go now. But I'm telling you, her pick a card readings. I picked mine. She did, you know, like fire, water, air, earth. I picked mine today and I'm telling you I had to pick my jaw up off the ground because you tune in to the one that matches you and then she reads it and you're like, damn. I mean, it was like, it was a reading just for me. That's how she rolls. Y'all got to check her out. I'm telling you. It's Everybody inspiring. in the chat that has a channel is awesome. Kevin, the healing medium, Kevin Chandler, Kevin loving vibration. Everybody is awesome. I just happened to see her video today, like an hour ago. And I'm still like trying to put she, myself she, together. Pepe just said, don't go now. I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Don't leave now. Don't touch that channel. <laughs> don't touch that dial. But if you guys want a reading, this is a great way to get a reading and it is free. Now, she also does readings, as does Kevin Chandler, which is uh, Kevin's Loving Vibrations, 
and um, Kevin Healing, and the Stone Spirit is here. Woohoo! It's a party. It's a party. I love parties. Lots of great readers in the chat today. All right. We're going to keep on moving on. Um, Biden has a YouTube channel. That's pretty cool. You pick one. Oh, heck. Pick, pick two. I've They're small. Just, I've been just chilling out over here. Okay. Um, da -da 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 -da, I'm going to say, well, you, we've read all the ones in our, well, what we will didn't, happen we didn't to do, Alina Haba? I'm going to throw, oh, okay. What, what will happen to Alina Haba and her antics? You know, that is curious. Isn't it curious? Because it, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, the stuff these attorneys are saying is just insanity. I mean, attorneys everywhere must be like popping Tums and drinking my Lanta. I mean, how do you even like square this with your profession? Um, so what's going to happen to Alina Haba? Um, oh, well, okay. For allegedly and for entertainment purposes only, the guides are reminding me that I talked about this in the past. I feel like, and again, allegedly, she might be paid for. I think that, um, now she's the one that came on the video and said, well, you know, you got to admit that I wouldn't be Trump's lawyer if I didn't look good. <laughs> you know, she said, if I had to choose brains over looks, I would choose looks. She said this on a video. So, you know, she's already... That's her line in the sand. That's what she thinks about her profession. And I feel like she's on somebody's payroll, allegedly. And uh, I don't think she, a little bit like Cannon, they don't care. They're going to be taken care of. They'll be well cared for is what I got. What do you think, Alan? Yeah, and they'll fade into the background. She'll open up a <clears throat> ready-to-wear store in, uh, you know, Palm Beach. Um, <laughs> that, you know, she'll, again, they're, they have their 15 minutes of fame. Um, Trump still has the capacity to uh, attract attention. And, and, and I, I think that's going, again, we, it's going to be changing for, for whatever reason his star is dimming. Susan, I also had, you know, I've talked about this. Um, that we, we're, we're astounded by the, by the um, just how he can, how he can prevaricate and, and, um, uh, say things just with with impunity, um, but it reminded me of Joe McCarthy during the the um, the red baiting, you know, in, um, in yes. the East and yes. the House on American Activities yes. hearings, and how he seemed un unstoppable, and how it created he was a demagogue and a bully, and pe he just could not be stopped, yes. and it was it was um, it was a scary time, and lives were ruined and careers crushed. Yeah. And then there was that moment with Senator Welch in a, I think the American public got tired of him. And so this was televised like the Watergate hearings were back then. And this Senator said to him, um, have you no decency, sir? Yeah. And that pricked the balloon and that whole, that whole uh, McCarthy was a has been after that. So I, I think that Trump is going to have his McCarthy moment coming he's gonna up. He's going to Icarus. I think he's going to melt his wing, melt, melt his hair. It's <laughs> it's going to be, that, that's a nice image. Um, I think that he will be seen for who he is. The, and I think that's going to be a combination of his own hubris and his own um, antics, but also some of the astrological changes and energetic changes. And people are really going to see it. They're just going to see it and think, wow, that is embarrassing. And the man's a fool. Yeah. And I will be so happy when that day gets here because it just seems like for whatever reason, you know, a lot of citizens just either can't see it, don't want to see it, or, or are too distracted to care. You know, they're busy with their kids and their job and, and, you know, a lot of things going on and it, and, and, you know, we have this kind of malaise in America where we feel like, the president isn't going to affect us or it doesn't really matter. Right. It, it, so, you know, I think when we wake up, I'm going to be thrilled for that day. Yeah. I, th I think that um, it will be something that you can't not, you can't unsee it afterwards. I think it's going to, again, I don't know if it's, te it's got to be televised given our, or not, I'm showing my age. It's going to be on public 
on, on public media. Um, and it's going to be sobering. And um, it, there's just a lot of information coming out. It almost feels like um, the energy we're picking up on now, which again, is full of anxiety. What's going to happen? When is he going away? We're all clutching our pearls and twisting our worry beads. And then it feels like one day it's, it's over. And then we have to figure out how to pick up the pieces and move forward as a people and as a culture and as a democracy and make decisions about who are we now, now that we've seen, we've seen that, what do we want to create? We've seen the underbelly. We've seen the horror, the horror right. that is us. You know, we, we are the problem, right? We've seen it. And now we can think about how we want to go about changing that narrative. Yeah. And that can be a creative time. I mean, again, transitions are challenging and uh, disruptive and, um, and you know how much you and I like transitions, Susan. <laughs> change. We love change. change. Yeah. I love change. change. Radical yeah. acceptance. Let me tell you, the new theme for 2024 is radical acceptance mm -hmm. and paradoxical. It. Those you, two you, things are pretty much going to be the things that we're, we're going to be learning this year. You, um, go, you go first. I'm going to throw you a bone. <laughs> I'm going to throw you a bone here. Okay. Hey, and Jamie, thanks for putting a fefe and all. Thanks to all of my uh, moderators. Thank you guys so much. And Sharon Sipe, I hope you're feeling better because the other day when I was on, I think you were under the weather. So I hope you're feeling better. I just wanted to shout out my moderators and thanks for putting everybody's channel on. I appreciate all that. Okay. Will Texas ever become a blue state? I say yes. I'm bullish on Texas. Uh-oh. No, I had a... Um, Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I had a brain Don't start. Me out here that, that's, that, was pretty, that was a pretty moment. <laughs> I was thinking about that day that Trump will disappear. Uh, yes. Um, we also, we had a similar... I'm, I'm back. We had a similar question, not about Texas, but about when will the justice... Let me do this one. Okay. Look at you managing the controls like a professional. Well, after a small this stroke is, there. This is, no, no. Hey, Cindy P. Yeah, I, I, you know, I true justice. Um, we're we're going to be, we're going to oh, be in a long a, convalescent period. What? That's a, that's a loaded, true justice is right. loaded. I, I, that's what I'm saying earlier about the guides. You had a hundred chances at this guy. Only five hit their mark, and only three. You know, true justice is a, a high standard, honestly. Well, it's going to take a long time to clean up the confetti. Um, <laughs> nice. And that's just in your room. Nice. Um, nice. That's right. That's right. But I think you know the arc. The arc of this whole. This is a profoundly important time. That's true. Not in our lives, but in in all of history. So. It, you know, it's not it's not going to happen overnight, and all this stuff has to be uh, exposed first and then cleaned up. And I, you know, we're we're talking in, into the mid late twenties, early thirties. It's a process, and a lot of the new generation coming in are going to have different ideas about governing and how it's supposed to look, and um, that can be exciting. Challenging but exciting as well. Really? I was just singing that song 20 minutes before I came on live. Literally just singing that song, which is my guides often communicate. I agree, Alan. I but you said 20s and 30s. I mean, I I didn't even know out for a minute. Or I thought you were talking about the temperature. No, I'm like we'll be you, we'll be around 2020s and 2030s. If you You're, stop eating cheese, you can be around in the 30s. In the 2030s, I, I have significantly curtailed my cheese intake. Okay. However, my chocolate intake has gone up. <laughs> no, the the arc of this is just that um, we're we're really creating a new society, and that's just going to take time. Okay, this is a great question. All right, whoops, Cindy. Um, 2040, will Trump be looked at as a criminal? A criminal. He will be disgraced. He will be disgraced. He'll be disgraced. Um, 
again, like uh, Benedict Arnold. They just keep calling him Benedict Arnold. Now, will he be called a criminal? What do you think? In 2040. Well, she was like, I'll take your 2020 and your 2030 and see you 2040. Thank, thank you, Cindy P. Um, I think that we're going to see him as a catalyst for change as well. You know, history is going to give us some perspective on, and he may not be the last demagogue. There may, you know, it's not all um, sunshine and polka dots after this. There's some real heavy work to be doing, and there could be some uh, Trump pretenders. Um, coming through as well. So I think he'll be seen as a catalyst that initiated the changes that need to be made and a criminal. Yeah, I agree with all of that. I mean, I mean, maybe we'll be, and by 2040, maybe we'll have the perspective to be thankful that, you know, and we've, we've all talked, I think all of us have talked about this, that, you know, had this guy Trump been smarter, uh, more, sinister even, uh, we would all be in a different position right now. I mean, we're lucky that he's so hapless, that he's just so, he steps on his own feet and he, mm. you know, he, he has not been the, the most, uh, fearsome, you know, um, who plotter. No, so we'll look well, back well, I think, say, you know, I think we're going to see how lucky we were ultimately. I do too. I, I think I do too. we're, you know, we're we're hand wringing now, and I'm not saying that's that's um, not to be done, but I think we're going to see how close we came. Yeah, I agree. We're going to feel lucky. We're going to feel mm -hmm. like we dodged a bullet. Well, I, I kind of feel like that now, to be honest with you, because I don't see him ever getting back in office, and he wasn't successful in doing what he tried to do. So I already feel like we dodged a bullet, honestly. Yeah. A lot, a lot of, a lot is going to come out and a lot of books and movies, right, Susan? Yeah, I, I do think that I do think this is going to be fodder. You know, the artists, thank God bless them. They take these things and they package them up and they give them to us as lessons. You know, I'm over here quoting Shakespeare, right? Um, so yeah, I think, um, <laughs> I think we, I think try, we it, try to teach as well. Don't we, we try to be an uh, entertaining uh, yet educational program. I mean, all I yeah, can it, see now is Trump's hair melting. I it's at, what is that word they're trying to say? Acetylene, a a C a acetylene, acetylene. What yeah. is that? They're calling it acetylene. Is that plastic? There's acetate. I, is plastic. Is. I think it's like an acetylene torch. Oh, so it's like an acetylene torch. Okay. That's what they're calling. They're telling me the word acetylene. Okay. That's hilarious. That's funny. Yeah. Welcome to my world. It's fun over here. All right. Um, Mike Flynn. We really need to talk about Mike yes, Flynn. Yes, we do. Okay. Mike Flynn is, um, this is a real problem, you guys. This guy is a real problem. Again, how this man was a general. Wow. Do we not have wolves in sheep's clothing, right? Do we not have foxes in our hen house? This is, if I were the um, the top brass, I would be really going over every command post he was ever in. I would be looking at his top lieutenants. I mean, I would really, I swear, talk about McCarthy, but I would be looking at everybody with a little bit of scrutiny. Because uh, this is how you kind of poison the well, if you if you you know if you will. So I think he's he's a dangerous guy. Yeah, his brother as well. His brother is still over the Pacific Theater. I don't. It, this goes in the column with, and, and people have been asking. This goes in the column with Ray and the Postal Master. DeJoy. The joy, because why is Biden or the administration allowing Flynn's brother, who was on the call, he was there on the call on Jan 6. Why are they allowing this brother to still be a general? Why is he allowing Ray and why is he allowing DeJoy? And all I can come up with is, is that 
The guides are saying that Biden, and I, I get it. This is another one of those things that, that Alan is talking about. In 2040, we're going to look back and we're going to see the brilliance, the absolute brilliance of Biden. Mm -hmm. and, and I see it now, but I'm saying that some of it we can't see now. Biden is like, this is not how you run a country. You don't just summarily, you know, arrest people. You don't summarily remove people. We have checks and balances. We have a court of law. We have a military court. Um, things have to go through the justice system. And somebody wrote a comment earlier that slow justice is no justice. And my guides immediately said in my head, well, what is quick justice, Ahunta? What is quick justice? Is that is that a firing squad? You know, this is this is this minefield of of, of decisions that we all have to make as Americans. And Biden is saying, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to. Uh, another thing that guys just said, I'm not going to stack the Supreme Court. He could do that. He has a lot of things he could do. And he keeps saying, no, I don't. I'm trying to prove to you guys that there's checks and balances for a reason and that the president should be measured. He's trying to lead by example. However, we're not in any ordinary day, are we? We're not in an ordinary day. What do you think, Alan? I think that um, I know DeJoy irks the fact that he has his job irks a lot of people. Same with Ray. Um, and who was the other one? Ray, um, DeJoy, and there's one more. But Wait, I think his brother, who's actively a, a some sort of general, he's over the Pacific Fleet. So what I heard is keep your friends close, your enemies closer. There's a way oh, in which they can be monitored and um and kept busy um in those positions and those are relatively minor i know postmaster general is an important position are you kidding me all three of those are not minor they're they're they are it feels like they are there for a reason for for a specific conscious yeah. reason that, that it was it was discussed because there were there were um Staff, there were big staffing changes when the new administration came in, and and it could be that in some ways they're cooperating quietly. They're, it, it it feels like we will see, as you said, the brilliance of this battle plan. Yeah. Um, when it's when it's all done, um, I also think DeJoy doesn't have much fight left in him, so he's just sort of he's like a civil servant who's doing doing his job, and they have they have handlers as well watching them. Yeah, I agree. I think I do think that there I agree with your comment about keep your enemies close. Right. Um, and I and I I've always known that Biden has an amazing intelligence apparatus. He has the guides have told me he has the best intelligence apparatus of any president, save one. And I don't know who that is, Roosevelt or Truman. Um, anyway. He apparently has an, so, so I think you're right. Uh, you know, put them in their place, give them lots of rope, uh, monitor everything they're doing. And when you have enough, um, in the trap, close the trap and then you've got them, you know, dead to rights. Uh, so that's, that's definitely something he could be doing. Uh, thank you Seascape for that. I appreciate it. Um, do you think Merrick Garland's going to be replaced in 2024? <laughs> Helen's like, my God, what is this? A firing, a machine firing? Yeah. What I am I, a gumball machine? Um, <laughs> yes. I think Let that he um, he may want to leave. I think that there, I think that there is a, um, I don't know, again, a, there's so much we don't know now, even as brilliant intuitives um, and humble ones. I think that there's so much weak energy that is going to be so fast paced, fast moving, fast changing, and that there are going to be um, multiple choices that people have. And it feels like the circumstances could be that he um, he asks to leave. He wants to leave. He oh, wants God, to see, see he wants to see something through. There's something that he's made a personal and professional decision to see through. But I don't know that he has the um, gas to continue for um, another administration. God, no, I don't think so. 24. Well, if he left, how, what does that do to Jack Smith? I mean, 
do they just get in a new person and Jack Smith just has a new boss, just like anybody would have a new boss. I'm sure that it, it wouldn't affect the outcome or the, but it would look bad. It, it would look bad. And people already are kind of judgy around Garland, not being very proactive. Um, but I agree with you. He wants to see this through. He wants to see something through. I'm not sure which thing it is he wants to see through. I'm not sure either. It's a component or a stage. Um, it that could be could, a stage. That could come in um, March, it feels. that In, in March, he may um, mm -hmm. start planning. He might start packing some boxes. I think that... Um, oh, okay. I get it. I think it could also be an exciting shift and change. I mean, I think that Merrick Garland is a, uh, again, a dutiful public servant, but it could be that there's, um, I don't know that Jack Smith has, has to change as a result of that, but it, what I'm getting is that it could be actually a really um, um, uh, exciting and dramatic positive change that injects new energy into into all of these, these, these initiatives. There, you know, so much time has been spent on the on the indictments and all of that there's so much other work to do as well that's true and you know merrick garland is tired that's true so when you were talking i i got that i think that june that june where, where did june come from um that march april maybe june time frame where garland is saying I'm, I'm wrapping this. This is, it, it, it's good. Like, you know what I mean? Like everything is tidied up and Jack Smith has his marching orders. And I'm wondering, like you're saying is when Biden wins, you know, a lot of times that second term, they, they do, they freshen up. They, you know, people go out, new people come in. So I think that might be when Garland takes a bow. I'm hearing takes a bow. Um, maybe in January, uh, maybe in February, but I, but there's something coming up in November for Garland. There could be a health thing with Garland. I mean, there could be a real viable reason where he's like, Hey, I, I just got to step down. Yeah. I, th those discussions have been had had. And that's what we're picking up on. I don't think Jack Smith is going to take over as AG. Do you think so? No. I don't think so. No. He doesn't want to. He wants to focus on this. As AG, yeah. he would have a million cats to herd. Here he yeah. just has a hundred. <laughs> and I, I really honestly think that after this, he might go back overseas. I'm not sure if he's going to stay here or not. This is this is um, th this this is uh, aging him. This is aging yeah, him, sure and I is. think he again he's he's he wants to see this through, and he's aware of how um, what a delicate what a delicate uh, juncture it is coming up. All right, let's. Did you? I was just going to, this person just asked, does Jack go when Garland goes? No, I don't think so. No. Go go ahead. And then, there's, there have been a couple of clarifications that, that um, the executive branch is distinct from the Postal Service. Yeah, I know. But um, it turns out that we now have another Democrat on the Postal Board, which we did it before. And I think that Biden appoints the board or um, there is some sort of overlap there. Uh, so it, what I've read is that we have enough people on the board to remove DeJoy if we wanted to, but two of the people who might be Democrats, I mean, you know, they're probably not partisan, but they're, they're hanging with DeJoy. Now, the thing about DeJoy before we move on is that I, I, I agree with you, Alan. I feel like his... Tank is running out. His abilities are running out. You know his um, his energy, whether it be good or bad energy. But I swear, I think he's trying to hold on because I feel like he wants to do one more thing to the mail in voting situation. And all he has to do is hold on till May, and he can throw some wrench 
in something that will cause mail-in voting problems. And I really feel like that might even be the last, the you know, the straw that broke the camel's back. You see that, or do you feel like I, that? I, I see that in his, I see that, it, I see that in his energy, but I also think that he is so watched. He is being so yeah. watched. Um, and and any, anything like that will come out and add to the chorus of people saying that, you know, this is the um, voting is being monkeyed with. But I think he's going to have cover. I think he's going to, I think it, I, I don't know. I just, I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. And, and it might come out, you know, people might say, hey, what about this? But by that time it's done. And then maybe, maybe he steps down and he says, oh, I'm, I'm going to step down because I'm, I don't have confidence. You don't have confidence in me. Well, by that time, he's done what he needed to do. Um, I think I think some of his alliances or his hand, I think that's, they have stuff on him. So. Well, that's what Lisa DeMars just said. <laughs> Detroit is under investigation for delaying the mail with the mail-in ballots already. Go, uh, Lisa. This is crazy, y'all. How are we even surviving this? Okay. What do we see for Katie Porter in 2024? I still feel like her star is ascendant. I still feel like, like she's going up, maybe not straight up, but kind of like, you know, at an angle up. What do you see for her? I think that for a lot of these people that have burst onto the scene, their moment will come. There's, there's going to be just such disarray for a bit. Um, so, you know, I'm thinking in subsequent, subsequent cycles, I, I would see her, um, moving up the food chain definitely um is she she's uh california she's right? california yeah. yeah and i think she's running so she might have given up her seat to run for is it barbara somebody's seat uh somebody yeah, barbara seat. um jackson no fine um, um uh she yeah. just passed away yeah yeah i know I, um, but we're, we're fine not woman. Yes, a very amazing person that, but that, but three amazing Democrats, I think, are mm -hmm. throwing in their hat for that ring, which is unfortunate because we kind of need to be a little bit more organized than that, I think. Um, Boxer, Barbara, Barbara Lee or Barbara Boxer? Barbara we have Boxer. everybody, yeah. everybody's name is in here. Boxer Lee and Feinstein. Is it Diane Feinstein? Okay, is it Diane Feinstein? Yes. There was another one, a boxer. Uh, okay. There's Bar Barbara Boxer. Schiff but is I, running. Yeah, yeah, see, Adam Schiff is running. Um, I think Katie Porter, um, well, again, Katie Porter, your guy in um, Texas, uh, so many of these people are, are have sort of cut their teeth at a national level, and they're going to they're gonna have more and more exposure as we, we go forward. But something about Katie Porter, it feels like she may um, – she may want to go back and um, do something for California, like uh, run for governor. And that seems like maybe a demotion, but she really feels really strongly no, about that's not a demotion. Yeah. Feeling that she could make a difference there. And she's, she's or very good. Comptroller, comptroller, secretary of state, something. Something where she feels she can make a real difference. And her passion is, is um, California. Wow. I want to, um, I want to just, indulge go for it susan go for it he's not going to be elected he's not even going to make it i mean and we could talk about that but i've always seen him either crossing over before his first trial you know his first jack smith trial or fonnie willis trial uh or right after it um he doesn't have uh, the stamina to to handle the idea that he is going to get Mo. He just he cannot. That is no. That no. no. He's not going to win. Um, what do you think, Alan? Do you think the same thing? Disagree? Yeah. Go ahead. Yes. No. 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 I agree. Um, I think that there are many, many, many narratives intertwined. This talk about Shakespearean. Um, yeah. This is a very, very complex time we're in, and we're going to see all these threads played out. It's, it's like a very complex 
crime novel and who is um, John Lacar? Lacar? Yeah, Lacar? John Le, yeah. Is he, he an was author? A spy spy novel. Okay, that's what the guides are telling me yeah. is John Lacar. John Lacar, Lacare. Yeah. So so be prepared to be surprised. And it could be that some of our our um oh what are they called? You know, our 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 heroes are are laid low a little bit, but I think that we're gonna see um how the sausage is made. And it's going to sober us all up. And I think that uh, Trump, there, there'll be a million reasons why Trump isn't electable. But we're still at that point where the dam hasn't broke. Yeah, we really are. We're still at that. We're still at that point where the patient is still crazy. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know, rabid almost, actually. Uh, Le Care is it Le Care? Okay, John, or, John Le Care, Carre, Le Care. Le Care. I don't know. I I can't do French, you guys. Um, I saw a question that I wanted to uh, Ted Cruz, you know what, you guys? Uh, CNN, I saw this on Twitter. CNN did a little like maybe 30 second thing where they showed Ted Cruz when he was saying bad things about Trump, do you remember when Trump said bad things mm -hmm. about Heidi, his wife and Ted Cruz was like, you can't say anything bad, but my God, you guys go back and look at him. He didn't have the beard. He was 50 pounds lighter. This guy looks like Wolfman Jack that has <laughs> gone to seed and, and been howling at the moon too many nights or something. I mean, he looks horrible when you compare what he looked like then and now. Uh, I don't think he's doing well health-wise. You really can't see the toll that this takes. Will he be unseated? I just heard yes. I think um, the Washington, D Washington D.C. liquor stores are doing a fantastic. <laughs> I think all these folks are hitting it hard because they – they're, they're under a lot of stress, a lot of stress. Grandpa Munster looked even better. I swear to God. But yeah, he does look like, like that. Oh, that's hilarious. Kristen, this is hilarious. Susan and Alan, maybe you could do story hours where you just repeat good things you're picking up and play soothing music. <laughs> I love that idea. Okay, everyone. I like that. Let's talk to our agent. <laughs> We're, we're just going to get comfortable and we're going to tell you a nice story. <laughs> Biden is our president. Books on tape. <laughs> I love it. Story hours. I love it. I love that idea. Um, and for those of you in states that can imbibe in marijuana, maybe that maybe that's how you guys are making it through this. I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay. What about... Uh, Jim Jordan and Kevin McCarthy. For old times' okay. sake. Kevin McCarthy. I thought you were going to say Matt Gates. You know Matt Gates has disappeared. Where is he? You know MTG is yakking, Bobert is yak, everybody's yakking him. Gates has like been quiet. So, okay, John Jordan and McCarthy. Well, and then we'll do we'll do Gates too. Gates is in trouble. I just hear, I heard Gates is in trouble. I've been seeing him, you know, the uh, Florida prosecutor said, I'm going to decline to investigate, you know, Matt Gates right now. Well, they are investigating him. It, it has come back around. And I think that's something that Alan has said, you know, this stuff is, it's almost like a karmic wheel. You know, you, maybe karma missed you the first time, but honey, she done, she did a, she did a Yui and she's stepping on the gas. So I think Matt Gates is in trouble. I, I think Jim Jordan, I just heard Jim Jordan is in trouble. Um, now McCarthy, why do I feel like he's stepping down? Is he stepping down? I know he stepped down from speaker, but did he announce he was stepping down? I think down he, le he, left, he left Congress. Right. Okay. He resigned. So, all right. He left the speaker. He left Connie. He took all his marbles and he's going home. I just heard that he wore a wire. What? Oh, it's about to get interesting. Now I need to go get some popcorn. McCarthy wore a wire. That's what I just heard. 
in what particular what who who was he wiring? Well, probably around up here. That well, was who, who, who was um stop it. Who is he? Who who I think he collect. I think he collected information and then he left. Um, I don't. Again, I I don't always. uh, Let me let me tune in. These these are the double crosses and all. It's it's so. It's like a a a wet knot. Um, What were we just talking about? Oh, um, Matt Gates. I think has some substance abuse problems. I think again. Allegedly. You know, uh, allegedly for entertainment purposes only. The um, slow justice has the benefit of being like um, slow drip water torture. So I think for a lot of these people, oh. it um, is taking its toll. And especially as they see Trump failing. That's a really good point. As they see the whole great cause starting to slip, as they see um, the puppet masters starting to um lose ground i think they can yeah. see the writing on the wall I'm, yeah yeah yep 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 that is fascinating that's really really good information uh because i had forgotten that he had left congress i mean that is fascinating and you and you will see these people doing whatever they can to protect themselves cuz i do see people you know, potentially falling down stairs and out of windows and choking on Big Macs and uh, well, well, and he he left fairly unceremoniously, if I remember uh, for correctly. sure. So I think I think maybe that was getting around. So he's back. He's back yeah. in California, I guess. He's in safety. Yeah, you're right. He's in. He he thinks he's safe. He, I want to say he thinks he's safe because I'm not sure he is, but. He he definitely at least feels out of that you know, milieu. Luck. So why did you bring up McCarthy and Jordan together? Was there some reason that popped into your mind? The question. The question brought uh, brought Jim Jordan, Kevin McCarthy, and you said who's missing from this is Matt Gates. And if we can get one more, we got Mount Rushmore. Um, <laughs> no. No. Or anti Mount Rushmore. So I think um, we, you know, Kevin McCarthy. That that's what came through for me. Matt Gates, I think, is um, very very concerned and is dealing with entertainment purposes only, dealing with some substance abuse problems. And then um, Jim Jordan, um, he might even he might double down um, as he. Um, there's something very brittle about him. And the Alabama coach, what's his name? Uh, Tuberville. Mm-hmm. Those two together are too dumb to get out of, you know, their problem. You know what I mean? Like they just can't, I don't know. They can't, ex- you know, like Kevin McCarthy did. He's like, peace out. Uh, pull in my, my ejection button. <laughs> this plane well, is about they to didn't, they didn't. They didn't see it coming. And now they. are too dumb. Right. And for entertainment purposes only. And um, they missed the boat. They missed the bus. They missed the um, uh, witness they protection. They missed a bunch of buses. They did. So won't that be interesting? Yeah. Somebody asked if people got target letters. I feel like they did. I feel like people got target letters in December, meaning people, meaning Congress people. Um, And I think there are more target letters going out in February or March. How do you think the people have asked me this question and you're really good with astrology. How do you feel the eclipse? There's a lunar eclipse in March and a solar eclipse in April. How do you feel like that's going to affect the political landscape, either Trump or Congress or even the speaker Um, or or do you feel like that's going to, what's the outcome of that? Well, what I'm getting is the, um, I believe there's a solar eclipse on the 8th of April. And what I'm getting is it's definitive. So it, it calcifies anything that sort of happened or not happened up till then. And it feels it's definitive. So I don't know what a solar, I know, I know, um, I banty banty about astrology, but I'm I'm um, 
I'll have to look that up, Susan. Something there's something about the eighth being um, an important date that we're going to look at before and after. It's a demarcation. It's a right? demarcation. It's like and it's, before and after. Yeah, before right. and after. And it could be that because March is is going to be um, full of thrills and chills. So it could be by April eighth. There's a sense that now this is this is the way it's going to be. This is the way things are moving forward. This happened, and we can't go back. And I do want to get to this question about Vindeman, but it is true. 45 was born in an eclipse. And the saying is, you know, you can often uh, exit in an eclipse. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's, it's a, yeah. Go ahead. go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. I think, I think the eighth is a solar eclipse, not a lunar eclipse, but there's a, there's, a, there's a lunar eclipse nearby, maybe a little bit later that month or mid month. Two weeks. It's two weeks before two weeks. The, so, the the lunar is two weeks before the solar. Okay, so the so maybe something happens on the lunar eclipse, and then two weeks later, it's on April eighth. There's something definitive. It's a demarcation, as you said. It's definitely aligned in the sand. Another way to put it is a line in the mm -hmm. sand. But but even bigger than that, it's almost like like the sun comes up, the sun goes down. I mean, it's literally that different. Um, but I don't know that I see him passing that. It's too cute by half. If you guys have ever heard that, it's just too on the nose. You know what I mean? It's too perfect. It's, it's too easy. It's too easy for us, you know? And I'm not saying he, he passes away. I'm feeling that there's something that there's no going back from. Right. Um, That's right. That's right. It's the tide has turned. Yes, that's that's the moment where we can say now we feel that there's um, victory is not victory, but we're moving in a, a positive direction. Both Maybe it's even just clarity, you know, clarity, some really good clarity. Someone so that's had... interesting. I don't we're um, lunar is in Libra and solar is in Aries. Um, and Libra is isn't that uh, the scales of justice? Libra and, the and, moon. Scales and balance. And what is the moon? What would the solar eclipse in, with the moon? We probably have a whole bunch of uh, astrologers. Good astrologers. Right yeah. Um, Someone had a question about meadows. Yeah. <laughs> and I know a lot of people are asking about DJT's hand. Look, I, I'm going to look further into it, but I feel like his wrist doesn't look like his wrist. It doesn't look old enough. It doesn't look like, you know, it looks younger than my wrist, right? So something's not right. And I was a photographer for 23 years. I could be wrong. I'm just saying. Okay. And what were you asking there, dear? You asked a question. About uh, Meadows, Vindeman, Mark Vindeman. Meadows. Oh, oh, okay. And Meadows and Vindeman. Yeah, both of those. So we've not heard much from Mark Meadows. Mm-mm. Why do you think that is? I think he is being protected. And uh, there's, I think some of the shocking aspects that we're going to find out is just who did, who was smart enough or desperate enough to um, help assemble this case, these cases, who stepped forward and maybe not out of um, a sense of patriotism, but out of a sense of saving their own neck. Self-preservation, right. I heard self-preservation. And it's so true, you guys, about the double crossing, the triple cross, crossing, the quadruple. Like, we're going to look back on this, and it really is going to be a movie because it's it, – we're. I, I see, like, um, you know, newspapers doing these diagrams because you're – you know what I mean? It's, it's going to be very hard to follow unless you see a visual of who was crossing, double crossing, triple crossing who. And, and the only and, people that know it all, I think, is Jack Smith. Right. He does. He is. His head is, his brain is full. Um, Susan's smiling because a year and a half, 18, 18 months ago or whatever, I had picked up that Mark Meadows, who then was still, you know, I, I forget where he was at that time, could turn out to be like John Dean who in during the Watergate years, those of you who remember the Watergate years. And John Dean was special counsel to the president, I believe, to Nixon at the time and ended up stepping forward and um, sharing a lot of information that was uh, that implicated 
uh, Nixon. And Susan, like, I don't think uh, Mark Meadows well, yeah, is like a year and a half ago. I'm like, really? Turned out to be a really hero like, here or, yeah. or a patriot, Alan. But it, but it's been something that we've watched. We've both yeah. watched, right? Like we've like literally every month we kind of tally up Meadows, and he kind of was becoming worse and worse and worse and worse. And now he may turn out to be the guy that Alan saw a year and a half ago, where even though he's a a criminal himself, um, he might end up being the prosecution. Trump's prosecution, Trump's prosecution may turn in part on his testimony or the information yeah. he provided. And, it, and again, I get the sense of turn on it that it's a, it's a, um, it's the the factor. And I also think that there are. Um, you know, black SUVs that pull up in front of these courthouses and we're like, wow, you know, who gets out and who traipses in to, uh, to testify. So much of this has been behind the scenes and um, quiet, which is the way it's had to be. But um, it's going to be, it's going to be more, um, uh, more public. It's a bombshell. Yeah. It's a bombshell. I just saw Eastman too. Do you think he, yeah, he's, we haven't heard a thing from him either. He knows. He's going to turn. He's going to yeah. turn. I mean, look, come on. Your choices are, you know, uh, to go to jail or to become state's witness. I mean, that's not a hard yeah. choice to make. Um, and then you just hope and pray you can get to the courthouse and not swim with the fishes. It was a um, easier, it was, it was a harder gamble back then when Trump's ascendancy was, not as endangered now. And um, so I think, I think once Trump falters, it's all going to come crashing down. So Vinman, do we want to cover Vinman? Vinman before we yeah. Vinman? I guess I gather he's running. I, I, the question is long gone, but uh, I gather he's running for Congress. Is that correct? We talked about I Matt Gates. Yeah. Um, Vindman. I, I, I don't know. And his, anyway. nice, and his nice brother. Yeah, one of the Vindeman brothers is running because mm -hmm. somebody corrected somebody in the chat and I don't know which one is running. I didn't even know he was running. But um, what are his odds? Good. I hear they're good. He's really strong. What is he running for? Is he running for Senate? Yeah, is can someone, someone help us? Huh? Well, maybe yeah, somebody can help us. Help, help us <laughs> help. Uh, we're calling a, a friend. What is that when you call big, the... Yeah, we're going to call a friend. Eugene, big, yeah, but which country. way is he running? Is he Congress? He's running for Congress. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, he feels good to me. He feels really like he might win. I can't say 100%, but he feels really good to me. Does he feel good to you or no? Yeah, he's got fire in the belly. And, and he's, he's strong. He's he is strong. strong. He's got stamina. He's got strength. Mm -hmm. He's got perseverance. He's mentally strong. See, that's mm -hmm. the difference. This is a whole different crazy world. You've got to really be very mentally strong. He, uh, I believe, was born in the Ukraine or in Ukraine and um, came to this country. And he believes in it. And he believes in what he it's truly believes potential. in it. Yeah, so he, he definitely has passion and fire in the belly. And he wants to make a difference. Right. So I think he's a good guy. Far. He is a good guy. He's a good guy. Both of them are good. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know why somebody's asking Meadows with a question mark. We I think we we didn't leave you hanging with Meadows. I think we think Meadows is gonna end up being a crucial player in Trump's downfall. Mm -hmm. And um uh, regardless of what you hear him say or do between now and then, that's just cover, in my opinion. Um, and, and I do believe that, what are they talking about? My guides are talking about, but I don't know the whole story, but there is somebody else. Somebody was asking about Biden and, oh, well, yeah. Okay. The last thing we should talk about is, um, the defense secretary. Um, you have to, you have to allow for cover, you know, Biden and Meadows and Jack, Jack Smith, they're not going to show us their hand, you know, come on. Uh, they're going to allow you to think certain things. They're going to allow you to think erroneous things. That's fine by them. They don't care what you think. 
they want to keep their hand close to their chest mm -hmm. until they have to play it. So if you're thinking something crazy, that's better for them anyway. Absolutely. And, um, there, you know, the Democrats can use spin and confusion as well. I think that, again, that that not knowing is of is is, you know, when you when you flush out game, you know, you send the dog in to run through the brush and flush out the game. And that's what they that's the game they've been playing. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's a really good way to put it, too. Um, and Thank yes, you. I do think the uh, Trump children are going to turn on each other. Listen, we've been saying this for a long time, haven't we? I mean, I feel like it. Uh, they're all going to point to each other. You know what I mean? They're they're not going <laughs> to they're not going to stay together. There's no honor among thieves. The guides just said to me. Uh, and I do think Ivanka is going to turn on her daddy. I think that. I've always seen that she's standing there in front of him and she kind of has this look on her face. Like I have to do it, but I don't think it saves her. I still think she might do jail time. Do you think she might ever do jail time? There's a, there's a potential for that. Again, there's so, so many, this is like a, um, there, there's so many characters in this movie and, and novel. Um, just it's, it's the breadth of it is huge. Um, I think there's a potential for that. Um, I think that what might be more dangerous for them, and I have to be careful is some of the double crossing that may take place from, um, interactions they had, um, in the Middle East. There could be, there, there's a, there's a, chicken to come home to roost um, regarding some of those the financial deals. And it feels like um, it feels like some of what they paid for wasn't achieved. People feel they were um, a government feels they were maybe um, swindled a little bit. They didn't get what they paid for. They didn't get the value. Mm -hmm. The uh, the prince didn't get the value for his two bill. He Thank wants you. more. He wants more. He wants more. Uh, it's almost like blackmail. You know what I mean? Like you, you know, you, you always want more, right? You're like, well, um, didn't I do it? No, I, you need, you need to get, do more. Yeah. Uh, that's a very slippery slope. That's very interesting. And you're right. That is a very dangerous. It, and also it's, it's a, a very different code. Very different code of ethics. That's a very different code it's not, of ethics. It's a very I mean, different code of ethics. Even different than the mob code of ethics. And honestly, Alan and I are very careful around certain countries and certain players. We just don't say their names. <laughs> so uh, that's we're we're very careful, honestly. So that's why I was kind of jumping in to help him out there. Uh, the you. last thing, let's talk about, and I don't even know why I'm talking about this because talk about being careful because this is super careful. Uh, who's our defense secretary? I cannot not remember his name, uh, but he ended up in the hospital um, and uh, secretary of defense. And uh, Austin. Thank you. Uh, and allegedly for prostate uh, and then a, an, an, a procedure. And then he, he had to go back to, I think it was Walter Reed or whatever hospital it was. And it has now come out that his aide called 911 and said, send an ambulance, no siren, no lights. Now, the problem is, is that allegedly nobody knew that our defense secretary was out of commission and the second in command was on vacation out of the, well, out of the country, I think in Puerto Rico, but, uh, you know, far enough away. And so this is a growing legs. This is getting more attention. Uh, and I think that it's uh, whatever, whatever kind of cleanup on aisle six that, that Biden's been trying to do isn't working. Uh, instead, it's getting more and more. more. I'm, I'm starting to see people who debunk disinformation that I trust say that this is a problem. That this this is this is disinformation that the administration is saying. So uh, I I feel like it's a little bit of a tempest in a teapot. Oh, there, really? there some poor 
but I'm I, I'll be disabused of that. Um, it feels that that some um, they didn't follow the protocol, but he was scared. He was in pain, and um, and and maybe I'm buying the oh, right misinform the disinformation. But it feels like they absolutely did not do what they were supposed to do, and um, but the the aide followed orders, and now uh, I I think he's pretty sick. I think he I yeah. think and and um, part of it was like damn the torpedoes. I just need to I just need to deal with this pain and this discomfort and yeah. everything else. So I think, um, does that feel, does that feel correct? Yeah. Or do you think there's no, more, more, that, more to it? It really does because that, that's why they made me think of it. Um, because remember when I said, um, there's some things we can't know, right? Like we're, we're, this is the same thing, right? So what the guides are saying is that, the reason that this wasn't public was because, well, we got big problems in the Red Sea right now. We got our soldiers and sailors over there at risk, and we don't want the world knowing that our defense secretary is in the hospital. So they purposely covered it up because of the intel and the appearance of weakness at this time. A decision was made, just like you're saying, Alan, 100%, a decision was made. It's better for us to fall on our, to ask for forgiveness than to let our enemies know what's going on. Um, and that's why they did it. It was sloppy and it, and it, it does, it isn't right. It, it wasn't right. And it is sloppy and probably that needs and, to be. And those, handled. and those type, and it will be, and those types of things get picked up on by people who want to carp at yeah. the, at the administration. True. But yeah, that's, you know, the timing was not great, but I think he's pretty sick. I think he's pretty sick too. And I don't know that it's prostate. I feel like it's well, I don't want to say. Never mind. I well, don't want some, to say someone it. said it in the um in the chat. Oh, they already said it? Yep. You already know what I'm thinking, and then mm -hmm. somebody else already knows what I'm thinking. Does everybody know what I'm thinking? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I need to put up a shield or something. <laughs> um we yeah. we can always <laughs> yeah, we can always we can always blame it on the eight ball. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. I think he's not well, and I think he may step down. It may look like a kerfuffle, it may look um unseemly, is what the guides are saying. Um, but there, um, there, there are people assigned to handle it impeccably going forward. And with <laughs> and with great care and compassion for him, because I think I think this this is not. A good prognosis for him. It's not and, good. And Biden, you know, Biden is a sensitive guy, and you know, it's just one more thing to handle. I know, right? One more thing for him. A, 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 not even a thing. A crisis. A, yeah. a real crisis. Yeah. Because what I understood, and I haven't double checked this, but so we have the defense secretary, we have the second in command, and what I understood was the third in command was one of those people that Tuberville blocked. That's that's, that's why this is. That's why this is. We don't such have a, a third in command, right. and our second in command was on vacation. So basically, we had no body at the helm of our defense when all this shite's going down in the Red Sea. Right. Well, God so, bless Lloyd. God Austin. bless him because he. You're right. I agree. I don't like his prognosis or diagnosis or. Um, <clears throat> What's going on there? And you know, I feel bad for Biden. It's true. This guy is just up to his eyeballs in um, alligators. I was getting that um, uh, Vindeman, one of the Vindemans could someday be head of uh, defense. Wow. I could get behind that. I, thought, I honestly thought you were going to say president. I got, well, I got uh, a secretary of defense or, or, or high up in the military. Yeah. I mean, secretary of defense can be president one day. Oh, true. he can't be president. He was born in Ukraine, right? Right. True. Right. Okay. True that. So, so he'll be, he'll be up, up there um, in the cabinet. I think he'll be in the cabinet. Yeah. Can he be secretary? Yeah, yeah, he can be secretary of defense. Yeah. Alexander, Alexander Vindeman. Alexander. That's right. That's right. That's right. 
he's he's a really good guy. I really, really like those guys. Um, yeah, but we don't we think it's more than prostate cancer, you guys. This is the problem. It, it's not prostate can I don't I'm not a hundred percent sure. We wished him well. Or if it is, it's it's we we it's a, we covered we covered it. Yeah, we covered it. We covered We're it. We're gonna wish All him right. well and find a final. Yes, what's the final? Question. The final last question. Thank you guys for hanging on till the bitter end. <laughs> where do Susan and where do Susan and Alan have their hair done? No, we're gonna skip that. <laughs> do you have anything you wanna? Well, I mean, I saw a question about Ukraine. Um, um, yeah, Frida, Freda, <clears throat> and I'm a a huge supporter of Ukraine. I think it's really awesome that even though the United States has been sort of the energy they're showing me is we got tripped, you know, we were trying to deliver to Ukraine and we got tripped by these Republicans in the, in Congress. Um, I think it's great that these other countries have stepped up and uh, maybe that's not the same, you know, maybe it's not enough, but I am feeling really good about that. And it makes me feel like Russia's getting this, this bigger picture that, Hey, you know, all these other countries are really stepping up. You, it's not just the United States. It's the whole world uh, is paying attention to this. Um, I also think that um, once again, there's information we don't know um, for in order to support the war effort um, that we don't want uh, Putin to know. There, there are things that are happening that are very positive. There are assists. Feels like Britain. And um, Britain and some of the Commonwealth countries are helping in ways that are sort of behind the scenes, but very effective. So there, um, it may be useful. I, I think the, the aid to Ukraine isn't a problem, but it may also be useful to um, paint it as um, that the, this is really hampering their efforts when there's some very effective um, initiatives happening behind the scenes. Yeah, there's a, so much happening behind the scenes. Um, and I really feel like, so there was another, the guides are just reminding me, um, the vision that I saw when all this went down, I did three videos on Ukraine in the very beginning. And basically we're here, like you are, map, map dot, you are here. But the vision I saw for the end was this civil unrest in Russia. And I mean, real civil unrest. And, um, and then Putin going out, this new kind of dictator coming in that has a military connection to an oligarch or something. Um, that's about two or three years that, that they, they have to have military because they have to have almost martial law because there's so much unrest. Um, so they tamp everything down. They lock everything up. I feel like the guides, if the guides could broker a deal, they would broker this deal. They would say, well, Russia's got to go because they cannot be on Ukrainian soil in the story. But perhaps they could rent Russia a port on Crimea. So Russia could have that port rented. I mean, they're going to pay money. And of course, there's going to be thousand rules because Ukraine's going to be a NATO member anyway. So that might be some sort of saving face kind of thing that could happen. Um, but I, Putin has to go and I think Putin will go. And I think, I think Putin and Trump are connected energetically. So if, if, if they're like with a, with a rope, like, so if one goes over the bridge, then the other one goes not too long after. So we're going to get a twofer. The, the, the war effort is going well, is what, what I get. And that there is, there, there are um, there are things that just can't be disclosed. Yeah, that's true too. And and those planes are coming. Um, and the guides told me I'm putting in your website, Alan. Oh, thank you. I was just going to do that, but thank you for doing that for me. Um, his website is alanjohnsonintuitive.com, and he does readings, and he's amazing, as you can see. Hmm. 
Um, the fighter jets are coming. I know they seem to be taking a little bit longer, but they really are coming. And the guides have told me that's that that is the that's the game changer. Um, but you know, there's a lot of stuff happening in Russia with a lot of partisan uh, groups that are going into Russia and blowing things up. And I mean, way deep into Russia, they just blew up one of Russia's spy planes. Um, you know, so there's a lot of energy working against Putin. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, I felt like there's a lot of activity, partisan activity behind behind the lines. A lot of partisan activity. And then I think, and to just, and then we'll answer this and we'll call it. So do you see Russia at some point going more into like a democratic socialist kind of country. It's interesting because I think that um, we may actually swap for a while, not completely. Wait, whoa, 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 what? You heard it here. Entertainment purposes only. But there, <laughs> You're about to a... give me a heart attack. We're going to become Russia? I think there are elements of oh, I'm rebuilding. Have to dig you out of this hole. I can already see Building our, shush. Of re rebuilding our um, our way of doing things, embowering. I think we ultimately may end up with a more social democratic de democrat system. I think it'll be tried out for a while. I think there's going to be a more of an FDR sort of vibe coming in here, here, or there, here. And okay. then I think, and then I think Russia is going to go through some um, uh, convulsions, so sort of death spiral, sort of um a real a real difficult period and then i think there's going to be more emphasis from um uh this the actually i see the scandinavian countries in finland um coming in and in their social democratic governments for the most part and helping craft something so it's going to be they're going to be very curious bedfellows over the next 20 years in terms of how the um the world writes itself that's a really good or, way to put it, how the world writes itself. That's a really, really uh, powerful vision for me personally. Um, I love that. And I think, too, we, we need to be – there's a lot of fear-based programming out there. Um, not here, not in our That's channel. why we're going to do Story Hour with right. the nice music. Once upon a time. And I do think that, uh, if, you know, to the extent we can elevate our thoughts – and be the change that we want to see, um, that starts, don't, don't ever uh, dismiss the power of how we can change things just by changing ourselves. So we should write all, we should just write that down. Don't ever underestimate right. the power that we have by, by changing ourselves. It all starts right here. I wrote it down. Um, <laughs> I was telling them to write it down. <laughs> okay. Write it down. Write it we down. Could, we could do a story hour around that. I know. I know. Look, uh, Debbie Kane is like, let's get sleepy. Alan and I'll come on and we'll put everybody to sleep, tuck y'all in. Some It'd of you be, be like drinking tequila. Some of you be toking. Some of you will be eating chocolate or ice cream. I don't know. I don't it'll know be like do. Mr. Rogers meets Mother Goose. <laughs> Mr. Rogers meets Jack and Daniels okay. is what okay. it's gonna be like. Now oh. we're officially we're officially punchy. <laughs> what do you mean? What's the FDR vibe? Uh, we we mean the FDR vibe. It's uh FDR. Um God, public works, um uh, uh social security, Medicare, public, Medicare a, for all. Being a public uh, servant. I mean, all, all the amazing things that happened that, that he pulled our country out of a death spiral. Um, that's where we're headed. We're going to, we're going to have more of that. I, we really are going to have Medicare for all. We're really going to have all these things, but first you guys have to make it. We all have to make it through this year. Mm -hmm. So take Alan's advice, take really, really good care of yourselves because it's really important. It's, it's super important. If you gorge on all this negativity, you're just going to be, in no shape, you know, and, and we, we want to, you to be happy and vibrant and joyful and healthy. And we have to remember to hold our center when we're triggered. And there are going to be a lot of triggers um, about the unknown, about what's going to happen, about the future and um, a lot of catastrophizing. So um, we 
we'll we'll support you. We'll support you in um, keeping calm, I guess. Yeah, we will. And laughing. We will. We'll be there. We'll be there with you guys. We'll be there for you. Yeah. We'll warm up, everybody. Yeah. The whole country is chilly. The whole country. I actually think Florida and California are holding out. You know, they're holding out in shorts, but uh, the rest of us are, I'm chilly. I'll say that. Um, all right, everybody. You guys take really good care of yourselves. Uh, we'll see you again. Actually, I have an announcement. I'm going to be on tomorrow night with mm -hmm. Linda G. Uh, so this is rare for me to be live two times in one week. But hey, you know, when you got stellar people wanting to show up, you got to do it. So I hope you guys check me out tomorrow night with Linda G. And we'll see you guys. All right, everybody take really good care. Be well. Take care of yourself. Absolutely. Bye, you guys. Bye-bye.